Chapter ch Chapter 14. I climbed up to buy feathers. That was easy enough to do. Fly like snare on a glass or hang upside down on the ceiling, so this was nothing. I could feel the wind whipping around. It rattled my wings actually whistled through the chinks and joints of my tiny exoskeleton. An incredible array of aromas assaulted my antennae. Unfortunately, many things seemed interesting were anything sweet, anything rotting, decayed, or putrid. A little like that stream offered it early on, Rachel pointed out, it's the same interest in dead meat. Suddenly a monster! It loomed huge in my eyes. Smaller me is still way too big. What the? What, what is it, Cassie asked? Oh man, I think it's a flea. It's not the size of a pool, not even slightly cute. Wait a minute, Tobias cried. Are you telling me I have fleas? D just one? Now he's gone. He probably jumped off. Actually, I was lying. The flea is working its way along Tobias' skin beneath the feathers, looking for a good place to sink its penetrating, bloodthirsty tongue. But somehow, I didn't think Tobias would want to hear that. Okay, we're at the hospital, Tobias said. I'll take a low pass so you guys want to jump off. Kind of like an old war movie. You guys are the paratroopers. Good example, Marga said. Ever saw in the old movies the paratroopers mostly get shot? Jake? Cassie whispered in Doss face and over here. Yeah? You could still drop out. Everyone understand. Thanks, but no. Tom or no Tom New York's have to be stopped. That's what I told myself anyway. I guess it was true. Okay, everything looks fine to me, Tobias said. I see an open window, no screen. You sure? Marco, when this light is bright, I tell you there's a single strand of spiderweb across the window, let alone a screen. He said spiderweb, Rachel moaned. Help me! Marco mimicked. By an absolutely terrible luck, the old version of Fly on the TV in Night 4, and like fools, we all watched it. Ah, the memes. I don't understand what this means, Axe grumbled. Get ready, Tobias said. Three, two, one, bail. I left from his back of my wings, the slipstream so fast and I tumbling end of the rim, but my speed dropped as I quickly regained control. Everyone okay? Um, I see the window opening, Axe said. I saw him fly past like a buzzing, wobbling, careening jet fire. At least I think it was him. I fell in behind, following in his wake. But it turned out Axe was wrong. What he thought was the window was actually a small sign on the side of a building. We'd fly actually pretty close to see anything, so he blazed on the face of the building, trying to spy it. Keep going, Tobias called. You're almost there. Suddenly, I felt a rush of cooler air building out at us. Here we go, I said. I turned the current of air and seconds later is in relative darkness inside the building. Okay, we're looking for anything that might be a miniature York pool. Everyone said Axe has been near one, so try to remember that smell and see if you're in time to pick it up. I'll tell you one thing, I've been over the maternity ward is. I smell a lot of dirty diapers, Rachel said. Okay, let's smell by your plant. Axe and Cassie, you're with me. Rachel and Marco, be careful. Rachel and Marco peeled off and soon disappeared. The three of us flew out into one of the hallway since it seemed very long and have bright lights. I smell poop. I smell a banana. At least I think it's a banana, and I smell more poop, Cassie said. Say one thing more flies, you have to find poop, hire a fly. And now I'm just imagining a fly with a little detective hat. <laughs> well, maybe a little pipe instead of Pregoscus. Below us, barely visible, caught the, caught the actual sight of big moving oval shapes on top of people's heads. But their limited sight seemed like floating islands of hair moving a blurry sea. How's our time, Axe? We have used 20% of our time, Axe reported. Good, that's on plan, trying to reassure ourselves as much as the two of them. Ah, what is it? The human tried to reach up and hit me, Axe said, but he was very slow. Hey, Cassie said, do you smell that? More poop? No. Similar to poop, but different? A weird smell. My fly brain doesn't know what it is. I'm trying to remember. I, too, am smelling something, Axe reported, but not very strong. I think we turn right. Right turn, I agreed. Now it's getting to scent, too. A dark, deep, rich aroma. Sweet and oily. Marco, Rachel called. Do you guys have anything? Barely here, must away. Nothing. We're at the limits of thought speak range, um, Axe said. Now it sounds more powerful. In there, I said, I think it's a door. We landed. My six legs each arm with sharp talons and sticky pads gripped a smooth surface of the door. Here's a question, Cass said. How do you open a door in your eighth of an inch long? Down the floor, we can walk or fly into the crack. Seconds later, on the linoleum marching jerkily forward, you pass beyond the door, then look instantly took flight. Oh, there's something in here, Cass said. Over there, see a big shiny looking super dome kind of thing? Yeah, I think that might be it. Does anyone else? Do you see anyone else in the room? Any humans? No one did. Okay, Axe, you need more first. Someone barges in your body more useful than two of us. Yes, Prince Jake. Axe, you really don't want to call me that. Yes, Prince Jake. I am beginning to change. <laughs> cool, Cassie and I are hanging on the ceiling. You just later saw a vast eyeball stuck at the end of a long stalk come shooting toward us where we hung upside down. One axe is extra stuck in my eyes. It turned to look at us. Then a violent vibration in the air, the eye disappeared from sight. And a second vibration of something heavy falling. Axe, you okay? Yes, there was a human here, but he is unconscious now. Good job, Axe. Chapter 15. We demorphed as quickly as we could. My human eyesight returned to saw Axe, staying calmly in his andalite form. Against the far wall was a man in a white coat holding a clipboard. He was crumpled and unconscious, but alive. Knowing your brother's a controller, I did not kill this creature. I feared it may be him. No, it's not, but that's a good instinct, Axe. Whoever he is, he's someone's brother or son or even father. Well, that's one start for morality, at least. 
I took one look at my own body. I was bare for like I always came out of a morph, and wearing my silly bike shorts and tight t-shirt. You and I can compare how more clothing, more most minimal clothing. But I've seen that one with usual legs and arms. You okay, Cassie? I'm fine. She won't look at the, the shiny super stone to us flies. It was a stainless steel vat above about eight feet across. I laugh. You know what this is? It's a whirlpool, a jacuzzi. Someone just put a lid over it. Why do they have this in a hospital? Uh, for therapy, I said, you know, people with muscle strains or back problems. I stepped, a step, I stepped to the side of the whirlpool and grabbed the handles and lifted. It was easily on, opened easily on hydraulic hinges. And I looked inside and I recalled. The water was sludgy, brown, and viscous, and rolling with slugs. Yerks, in their natural state. Yerks, Axe said that combination of disgust and pure hatred and lights always showed. A portable yerk pool. There must be a small cadron nearby. Yerks must leave their host bodies every three days to return to a yerk pool. And yerk pool they feed by soaking up various nutrients, but especially cadron rays are like rays to their home sun. Cadrones are artificial sources of those rays. Can they see us? Now I mean? No, Prince Jake, in a natural state they're blind. I was slowly across the, around a whirlpool and my foot hit something solid. The pump. It was disconnected with a wire pulled out of the wall socket. The control panel had been ripped away, exposing bare wires. Axe, what do you think would happen if all the yerks in there temperature liquid suddenly went up by, say, 120 degrees, and the liquid was all agitated? Axe was puzzled. I believe the heat and agitation may destroy them. Well, that would be a pity. I made a quick decision. Axe, watch the door. Cassie, we may need you in some more dangerous morph. What do you got? Wolf? Perfect, but no howling. What are you gonna do? We came here to stop this operation, right? Well, I think a hundred or so yerks would be a good way to start. I'm gonna hook this thing back together and jacuzzi us filthy creeps to death. Hmm. There are no tools in the room, but I did find some tape and a pair of tweezers. That was all I needed. I started reconnecting wires. Red to red, blue to blue, green to green. But to switch this thing, so I'll be automatically at maximum. Maximum heat, maximum jets. But all the while in the back of my head was this nagging feeling. It couldn't be this easy. I connected the last wire. Cassie finished transmission to her wolf body. She stood by patiently like a very big, tough-looking dog. Okay, time to boil some yurks. I reached down and stuck the plug in the outlet. It took a few seconds and the bowling sound began, the familiar jacuzzi bubbling. The door opened, a man and a woman both wearing white lab coats. For a split second, they just froze and stared. And a light, the one yelped. Cassie's arm in a flash, she left and bit the one hard, knocking her to the floor. Axe moved toward the man, but he was fast. He dodged staying out of range of the tail. I was still behind the whirlpool and out of sight. I was trying to focus on morphing to a tiger for the fight. But then two more men dressed in uniform as guards started plowing into the room, and the first one leveled a gun. Axe, I shot a gun! Axe's tail flashed. Ah! The controller screamed. The hand of him holding the gun was no longer attached to his arm. Get back up to the pool area! Andalites, the second guard screamed to walkie talkie, then he drew his gun. Blam. Blam. They told me later there was a third shot, but I didn't hear it. A sledgehammer bow struck the side of my head. A ricochet! For a brief second I clung to conscious, but then I swooned and I fell. Face down the pool. Face down the bubbling, bowling mass of dying yurks. Chapter 16. Face down unconscious in a superheating yurk pool. I didn't know for how long. When I woke I had two terrifying, overwhelming feelings. One was suffocation. I breathed in a lungful of liquid from the pool. I came to, gasping, hacking, and gagging. I was alive, but I could barely breathe. Every breath was a struggle. I coughed and I think at one point I threw up. The second feeling was pain in my head, pain like nothing I'd felt before. It was like someone was drilling a hole in my ear, drilling straight into my brain. I wanted to scream, but I was still choking. I was on my knees on the floor of the hospital and wanted to cry from the pain and gasping every half breath of air. All the while a battle raged, you're trying to get in the doorway, but it's too near for more than one or two human controllers to attack. Axe's tail and Cassie's long wolf teeth are long to hold them or not to hold them off. Another gunshot. Stop firing, you fool, someone shouted. The pool's in there. Visit free, eat your guts. Even in my condition, I can see Axe and Cassie couldn't last. I could need to morph the going to battle, but I couldn't seem to do it. The pain or the lack of oxygen, I couldn't concentrate. My brain was fuzzy, drifting. Heard rumbling, a pounding from out the hallway outside. Their cries and screams of outrage, and suddenly in the room burst a huge black gorilla and a second wolf, Marco and Rachel. They had driven the attackers away, but only for a few seconds. Jake's hurt at Cassie, say. He fell into a yurt pool. Marco grabbed Jake, Rachel, or gets something to cover his face. Axe, Cassie, he fell in the door. I'm going to change morph. We need more firepower. I felt like being lifted off the floor, a white cloth wrapped around my head. One of the lab coats on the injured controller, I guess. I was crawling on the humans under a gorilla. rock a bye baby, Marco joked. Hang in there, man, we're getting you out of here. I was still coughing and gasping, my breathing was at least improving. Now to speak back, I could breathe and keep from passing out. At the same time, something had happened to the pain in my head. It was diminishing, but instead of feeling more clear ahead, I felt worse, more confused. Get them, controller yelled. Attack, attack. Then I'm gonna fit through the doorway, and it was Rachel. I guess I'll have to make the door a little bigger. I got a glimpse through a fabric to hit my face, a wolf flash thing huge and gray. Is that her elephant morph? Rachel, a voice in my head wondered, a voice surprised. A human. 
Boom, woomph, crunch. Now the door's plenty big, Rachel said. Wild screams and panic, cries of pain. I was bounced, slamming against the walls, and dropped at one point. Felt this go down a set of stairs. Felt like a hand grabbed me and I was slipping me away. Finally, fresh air. We were running like mad for a shelter for Santa Teresa from the hospital. Cassie, Marker said, you have a horse morph, right? Quick, before they figure out how to follow us. I was tossed to the dirt. That gorilla peeled back to coat his cover my face. You alive? Man has intense. That's one hospital that needs some redecorating. We're gonna put you on Cassie and we'll try to cover your retreat. My head, I said. Headache? No surprise, dude. Something wrong. I can't think. Don't worry, take a break. Got in control, more or less. Unbelievable, said a voice. Could it be humans? What was that voice? Where was it coming from? Marco looked at me and saw me over the horse's back. Cassie. Cassie. A human, yes. And Rachel, the cousin. Human as well. My hand tried to pull the coat away from my face. What was happening? There was a voice in my head. We were running now, running at full gallop through trees across the lawns down suburban streets where Cassie's hooves clattered loudly. We jumped a fence, so I flew for air and landed hard in the dirt. Um, I felt pain, but it came from far away. The coat was loose. I looked around. Trees everywhere. A painting horse nearby. I saw this, but in a distant way, as if I was watching on TV. My eyes moved left, moved right. They moved all on their own like someone else was focusing them. Cassie. I tried to say her name. Cassie. But no sound came out of my mouth. Don't struggle, Jake, a voice, I had, a voice in my head said. It's pointless. What? Who was saying that? What was... Then a laugh only I could hear. Put that hum primitive human brain to work, Jake. Jake the Anamorph. Jake the servant of Andalite filth. And then I knew. I knew what the voice was. A yerk. A yerk in my own head. I was a controller. Chapter 17. Very good. You figured it out, said the silent voice in my head, mocking me. No, no, no. Jake, are you all right? Cassie asked. Her mom thought she heard me cry out, but no, she's just concerned. Tobias landed overhead. Is he okay? I can't tell. He's alive. He's breathing, but it's like he's zoned out. I take him to the doctor. I wanted to tell them both to scream. They have me. They're inside of me. But I couldn't make my mouth move. It was like there was a roadblock. I could form thoughts to give the order to my lips and tongue to speak, but the order never got there. Struggle all you like, human. Fight me. The are good. Go ahead. It won't matter in the end. I'm in your head. I am wrapped around your brain like a living blanket. No. I can read your thoughts. I control your body. I am tapped into your memory. I can read it like a book. Get out of my head. No, no. Oh, I don't think I want to do that, Jake. Why would I abandon such an interesting host? So you're the one who's driven Visifree half mad with rage. A kid. The midget. Midget, how'd you... Oh, you're surprised I know what Tom calls you? <laughs> the irony really is sweet. Don't you get it, clever Jake? Don't you see what's happened, my little animorph? Jake, Cassie had become human again. She knocked down beside me and looked in my eyes. He's alert. His eyes are tracking. Jake, can you hear me? It was a nightmare. That's what it was. Another nightmare. I'd wake up soon. I'd wake up and laugh and laugh. I am Temrash114, formerly 252 of the Sultanar Pool. I were promoted. I'm sure you're happy for me. You filthy slug. Get out of my head. Do you know I know who my last host was? Who it was? Shut up, shut up, stop talking, go away! It wasn't real, it couldn't be real. It was Tom, of course, your brother. I am the Yerk who controlled your brother. That got through my hysteria. What? Ah, I thought that might interest you. Yes, Tom was my host. Then he's free? <laughs> oh, you're even dumber than your brother. No, your brother's body is just given to a new Yerk, someone with a lower rank. I am too important now to be wasted on Tom. I have taken on a new and important project, a very special host. The Governor? Jake, Tobias tried thoughts being me. You can hear me move your hand. Well, not a complete idiot, are you? Yes, I always be given the most important post on this planet, but this is better still. Visifree is very determined to catch you. He will be surprised to learn you are human. I'll never tell you who the- The others? You mean Cassie, Margo, Rachel, Tobias sitting in a tree over our heads, and of course the one remaining Andalite, Exilmi Iskaroth Ishtil? We have to get into a doctor, Cassie told Tobias. Just then Marco arrived. He was fully human, dressed in his morph clothes and walking gingerly out in shoes. Doctor? He needs a doctor? What's wrong with him? Nothing's wrong with me, I said suddenly. I'm fine. Only, I didn't say that. My mouth spoke the words, but I didn't say it. The yerk had spoken from my mouth. No way, Cassie said. We're taking you to a doctor. You didn't for like five minutes. minutes. Maybe you have a concussion. My body set up. I'm sorry I scared you, Cassie, but I'm fine. Where are you going to take me? Back to the hospital? What if someone tries a blood test and it shows them an animorph or something? Like what? Some Marcus and Skeptical? How do I know? Maybe some leftover roach DNA. Look, I'm fine, okay? I'm going back up to Tobias said. Make sure no one's after us. See if Axel and, um, 
I mean, sorry, Rachel and Axe are okay. I keep saying that. He flapped his wings and flew away from her trees. As soon as you know Rachel and Axe are safe, we can break them and go our separate ways, I'm said. New York suggesting his next, considering his next move. I couldn't hear his thoughts because I could feel him using my brain. He was digging for my memory, trying to learn quickly. He was using his, my brain, using me. I had to do something quick, something to warn them. Sure, they had guessed what was happening. They were the two people in the whole world who were closest to me. Sure, they would realize I was no longer myself. Wouldn't they? I don't think there's much the Earths can do right now, Margaret said to Cassie. We're deep in a national forest. They take a while from there to organize a search. They need helicopters and lots of humans. And they don't even know what they're looking for. He laughed. After all, I still think Randallites. Yeah, but that means they're going to be very careful what Axe and said. We need to hide him. I think we may have, uh, we have Parbold, Swipey, Yorks, and a pool. They're going to be very upset. It was incredible. It was shocking to listen to. He was using my voice. My inflection. He was saying the words I would have said. Mark and Cassie would never guess. As far as I could see or hear, the Yurk in my brain was me. Yes, little human, the Yurk sneered silently. Your body is my home now. Mine. Body and mine are under my control. Forget resistance. It is futile. No host has ever overpowered a Yurk. It is impossible. I felt a dark wave of terror wash over me. He was telling the truth. I knew he was. No host had ever defeated a Yurk. Resistance was futile. Futile. I'd never be free, just like Tom. If he moved on, they'd just give me to another. I was their slave. Forever. There was a noise behind me. Footsteps on pine needles and leaves. At the same time, Spice came swooping down to land on nearby branch. I turned around. Rachel. Hey, cousin, I said. I see you made, okay? Then a touch on my shoulder. I spun around suddenly. I hadn't heard anyone else ar arriving. Axe just behind me. His eye face was close to mine. His big eyes watching me. And in that split second... That split second, hatred revealed itself. A hatred that crossed light years of space to place on planet Earth. And a light, the Yurk hissed silently. And that one word I heard the same fury and contempt I heard whenever Axe said the word Yurk. Only I heard it. The Yurk didn't say a thing. But, surprised, uh, surprised, unaware, unprepared, he did curl my lip in an instinctive expression of revulsion. It was a small thing. It lasted only a second. And then he just knew how to say, Hey, I actually did a great job back there when... And moved too fast, he whipped his tail forward in a blink of an eye as Scythe was leveled a quarter inch from my throat. Yerk, he said. Well, that deception didn't last long, it seems. Chapter 18. Axe, what are you doing, Cassian man? Are you nuts, Margaret cried. What's your problem, Axe? My voice asked the Andalite. But he didn't answer. He didn't pull that deadly tail away. Prince Jake has been taken. He is a controller. What? Rachel snapped back off, Axe. You're crazy. My head was in the yurk, or rather, his head was in the yurk pool long enough for a yurk to enter his head, and just now you all saw that expression. I am not human. I do not know every expression, so tell me, what was that look? Hmm. <laughs> this is crazy, yurk tried disbelieving laugh. Marco, Cassie, please tell us none I'm okay. But I saw doubt in Marco's shrewd eyes. Yeah, I'm sure you're fine, Jake, but Cassie, didn't you say Jake seemed zoned out? Like he wouldn't answer a few minutes even though he was awake? Cassie nodded. She too was looking suspicious. Yeah, he seemed normal, but he wouldn't answer me. I'm sorry, Jake, but he did act funny. It takes a while for Yurk to take full control of the host's brain, Axe said. During the time the host would be passive. He may even seem to be in a coma. I swear I could have kissed him right then. I wanted to yell, yes! Yes! You guys can't possibly believe this, my mouth said. I mean, okay, we have to be careful, but it's me. It's me, Jake, all right? Being Jake and all, you understand we take a minute to think this through, right? Rachel said. Axe, how is he it one way or the other? Tobias answered for him. The Yurks needs to return to the pool and absorb control rates every three days. If we hold him for that long, we'll know. Now for the slightest edge of fear from the Yurk. He was measuring the odd, trying to decide what to do, but with Axe's tail blade, he kept my body very still. We can't hold him for three days, Cassie argued. His family go ballistic. They call the cops. Chapman realized he's not in school. The bad guys put two and two together. Look, hello? Hello? It's me, Jake, remember? I'm not a controller. Marco shook his head. If he is, if there's a Yurk in his head, then he knows all our secrets. If he gets in touch with any other Yurk, we're all dead. We can't take that chance. Maybe Axe is right, maybe not, but we can't guess wrong. I agree, Tobias said. If he's still Jake, he'll understand. If he's a controller, well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Rachel, Marco asked. She went my gaze. Sorry, Jake, have to play it safe. You know that. Look, I argued, it's like Cassie said, my folks will go nuts, they'll call the police, they'll go on TV, ask if anyone's see me, they'll put up posters, I mean, no offense to ice, but I have the actual family, not some messed up aunts and uncles who wouldn't want to be taking care of me in the first place. People will notice if I disappear. I turned to Cassie. Cassie, come on, explain it to them. Come on, Cassie, I thought, come on, be hard for once, don't feel for me, don't be sweet, just this once. There is a way, Cassie said hesitantly. To be sure he's controller, Rachel asked. No, her voice was stronger. A way to keep his family in school for knowing he's gone. Axe could do it. He could morph into Jake. 
Cassie. Amazing Cassie. She had the one possible solution. I wish so bad I could tell her right then what, how amazingly smart, cool person she was. But the yerk in my head was not happy. What's the matter, Tim Rash 114 the salt near our pool, I asked, not feeling so cocky anymore? He reached one delicate many fingered hands on my face, and he pressed his fingers against my forehead. I'll acquire your DNA now, Prince Jake. But the yerk couldn't take it anymore. The analyze touch made him so fierce like a physical illness. Get your hand away from me, Andalite filth! He screamed aloud in a distorted version of my voice. But his tail didn't enter my jugular, and he knew very well how deadly fast it was. He didn't move. The air stared all stared wide-eyed. Well, Rachel said, at least now we're sure. N no, you're wrong, my voice pleaded. He's just making me mad. Hey, it's just it's just been a stressful morning, alright? <laughs> Give me a break. Andalite filth, Tobias repeated. We're supposed to believe Jake would say that? Jake, because he's stressed out? Nah, not in this universe. Jake, Cassie said, looking into my eyes. I know you're still in there. I know you're afraid, but we'll get that thing out of your head, Jake. We will. Yeah, that was pretty clever. That was very clever on their part. Racism fails again, exactly. <laughs> uh. Chapter 19. Okay, Marco said, we need a place to keep him. We can't use anyone's home, guess the thing allowed. We can't use my barn. My dad's in and out of there constantly. I know a place to buy, said, not far from here. Old shack in the back of the woods. We can tie we can tie him up, Rachel said, but we'll have to have at least one of us there all the time to make sure he doesn't get away. I can't help. I cannot help very much, Axe said. I'll be pretending to be Jake. Okay, Marco said, then the rest of us, Cassie, Rachel, and I'll rotate shifts on Tobias. Tobias stayed the whole time, so he has to go hunting. Okay, let's go, Rachel said. Come on, Jake. Get up. We're out of here. Cassie came over and gave me her hand. She helped pull me on her feet. It was an odd moment because I could feel her touch, but I had no power to squeeze her hand or give her any assurance. But the Yerk did that for me. He deliberately held her hand for a few extra seconds. She cares for you, the Yerk said. She is their weak link. Rachel will be strong, so is a hawk and an but Marco, he thinks too much and has an interesting history. He is open to persuasion. I felt sick. The Yerk was opening my mind at will, reading whatever he wanted. I had no secrets for him, none. He already knew everything my friends, and if he got away, my feet began walking. Tobias led the way, appearing and disappearing in the trees above. Rachel walked ahead, behind me Marco and Axe, Cassie stayed at my side. From all we know, Jake, you can still hear and understand me. I know you can't answer, or if you do, it won't be you. But it is me, the Yerk said. Who else could it be? The Yerk, Cassie said calmly. You think control just because I yelled at Axe like I've never lost my temper before? Come on, it's just a bad day. For all of us, but especially me. Not so bad today, Axe piped over behind. How many Yerks were in that pool? How many survived those temperatures? Only you, by getting aside Prince Jake. How many of your pool fellows died today? I could feel the Yerk bullying with rage. It was shocking bizarre to feel so much emotion, like something he could not hide from me. I could feel his emotions even if I couldn't penetrate his thoughts. Axe, the Yerk said, I'm never happy when a creature has to be destroyed, but I don't feel any pity for this Yerk. Start to enslave us. We did what we had to do. It was perfect. Exactly what I would have said, because exactly what I felt. I heard my ass like Cassie gave me a puzzled expression. See? She already has doubts, the Yerk said. She is bothered by the Hamlite's bloodthirst. She liked what I said more. Was he right? Would all my friends stand firm? How would they when everywhere I spoke sounded exactly like me? We marched through our woods that seemed like a very long time. None of us could move very fast so we were out shoes. Tobias knew his woods well and around brambles and rough patches, but still my feet were tender for an hour walking on pine needles on twigs. But the pain was so far away, like I was feeling for a distance, like I was shackled to a wall. Chained to a wall, I couldn't move my hand or even a finger. I couldn't blink my own eyes. I could not decide what direction to look or what sound to focus on. The Eric's control was absolute. Almost there, Tobias said. I'm going higher to make sure the air is clear. All this walking. Such a waste of effort, the Eric commanded, calling to me. They couldn't possibly hold me against my will. Not for three hours, let alone three days. You heard Tobias, right? Jake Tassie asked. Almost there. It's a good thing. My feet are killing me. I need to walk barefoot more often, like I did when I was little. Tough enough for time like these. Getting home would be easier. I could use my awesome rope and fly home. Cassie, listen, the Yerk said. I know you guys think you're doing the right thing, but there's no way I can pull off being me. My parents will figure it out, or worse, Tom will figure it out. Then we're all dead. Don't you see what's happening here? And it's hypothetical, but I think Viridae has a good point there. If there are ones who don't want to colonize other worlds and take over people, they probably didn't bring them along. Shut up, Yerk, Rachel snapped. I've known Jake all my life. Marco's known since we were kids. Cassie's known for years. Between the three of us can teach Axe to pass for him. It'll never work, the Yerk said. Rachel stopped walking and turned to face me, blocking away. She was throwing her seemed to be looking past me on my shoulder. No, you don't think so, Yerk? 
You are stop walking. Rachel, I'm trying to impress me how tough you are. I know you're too smart to really believe me in this. And you know as well as I do, this isn't gonna work. I disagree, a voice of irony. Humans believe what they see. And the yerk whipped my head around, saying a few feet, me, few feet in front of me was me. Totally, absolutely me. Chapter 20 He was a perfect copy of me, like looking in a mirror. I have morphed a while back, Axe said. I've been watching the way you walk and move to copy you better. Tur. Bit. Tur. The yerk grinned. You may look like me, but that ain't gonna be enough. I gave an hour before Tom figures it out. Marco looked at Rachel and caught an eyebrow. Rachel to Cassie aside and nodded her head. See, that's a stupid way to play it, Yurk, Marco said. If you really were, Jake, you might be frustrated we wrongly suspected you. But you'd figure the smart thing to do would be to help play the role. Because if it were you, you would help Axe pull it off. Rachel curled her limp contentiously. You just blew final jeopardy. You're still trying to make us let you go. By now, Jake would have realized he had to help us succeed. Ah, that's the third strike there. First was that look of revulsion, then there was what he shied a bit ago, and now this. It's more subtle, but it's still there. The Yerk said nothing. I think he knew he made an error, but I still sense absolute confidence, like a poker player holding an extra ace. We reached a shack. It was a depressing, fallen down mess of a wood floor and log walls and a roof that only half covered the place. There was a bird's nest of some type in the rafters. Bushes had grown in for a wall hole in the wall. There were beer cans and silk cans around. They looked pretty old. Nothing recent. Tobias had chosen well. We probably left alone for three days here. Tobias with his laser vision found a few feet of rope in old campground. He flew back with his talons and right to Marco tied my hands on her back. Sorry, Jake, Marco said, but that's the way it is. You're still in there. You understand. Well, loosen the rope every couple hours so the circulation isn't cut off, Rachel said. I'll be here for the first shift. Cassie and Marco are going back with Axe to make him prepare to play you. He already has a serious responsible thing down. They just need him a sense of humor to stop him from playing with every sound he says. That sounded reasonable to me, but I was still nervous when only two of them be around to guard me. Of course, one of those two is Tobias. I could not run fast enough to hide from him, and Rachel could morph into a wolf. But it bothered me that the yerk in my head not lost his cockiness. In fact, he was reveling in a fantasy of promotions and power. Within a few hours, I will be back with my kind. I will personally tell Visafree all I know, and it'll be the end of your little band. The end. Visafree will promote me yet again. It'll be the fastest series of promotions ever. I'm already in the 100s. I could rise to the 90s. I'll be an undervisor. In a few years, who knows? I could be a sub. I could be a visor. I think it's meant to be sub visor instead of undervisor. That could be a typo, but regardless. But it's more than just talk. I can see the pictures, too. The images in mind conjured up. They were sketchy, but I saw Visafree nodding at my, his head at my yurk still my body showed in my friends. They were all bound and gagged and lying helpless on the floor of his blade ship. Why was I seeing this? The yurk was able to shield his other thoughts. Was this too emotional for him to hide, or is he actually showing up for my benefits? Visafree would probably eat him, not gonna lie. <laughs> Under Visser tail. <laughs> I mean, it'd eat him if he did badly, and I don't know how I'd feel about him having a more capable body. That is something, too. I don't really know how I'd react to that, but, you know, let him dream. Do you have these fantasies a lot, I said, as cruelly as I could? You want to laugh at my fantasies? Should I delve into a few of yours? Let's see what's hidden deep in your brain, human. And then my horror was no longer in a cabin. It was a bright, huge gymnasium, but not exactly one. A sports arena with thousands and thousands of fans. I felt like crawling away. I knew this fantasy. It was kind of lame, I guess, but I couldn't escape. The yurk could play my fantasy as sticking a cassette in a VCR. In a fantasy, people were cheering, and I was there in a pro uniform. Older, but still pretty much like myself. The game clock was at 5 seconds. 4, 3. I set up and took an amazing 3-point shot from mid-court. Swoosh! The stadium went crazy. Cheering. Horn sounding. People chanting my name. And there was Cassie in the stand, smiling. She was sitting with my parents. And there was Tom. He walked out of the court and threw his arms around me, patting me back. Great game, he said. As usual. End of fantasy. The image disappeared, and I suddenly felt very small, very unimportant, very weak. Ah, yes, the yerk said, laughing. It shocks you. I can play your thoughts back for you. Your brain is so different from me while your primitive human control computers. I can play any file I like. I open any software. I can use you. I own you. I dominate you. You are nothing anymore. Just an echo. Just a ghost haunting the machine of your own brain. Yeah, I managed to say. Well, you're a screw-up tied up in a cap in the woods. In three days, you're going to be dead. I won't be here three days, he said. You'll be here far from your stinking yerk pool. No good draw rays, and you'll shrivel and die and crawl out of me. I've been calm, but then I lost control. You'll die. You'll die like the others died. You think you'll win? You'll lose. You'll lose. You can't control me. You can't control me. You can't control me. Oh, the yerk said with silky menace. That's just what your brother said. At first. 
Should I show you? Should I show one of Tom's memories for you? I can feel you cringe away. I can feel your fear. Yes. Yes, I will. Here, enjoy a preview of your future. It was as if a third mind had joined us. So real. So completely real. Not like a vision or a movie. I felt this as if I was actually there. My brother's mind, his thoughts, his memories as if I was seeing them myself. Tom, some piece of Tom the Earth still carried with him. It was just a few days earlier. He was sitting at breakfast table across from me. I saw his upper his eyes and I looked distant, distracted, preoccupied. Hey Midget, what's up? He asked me. Not much about you. Oh, I'm just going to a meeting. The shearing? Yeah, we're doing some cleanup at a park. You know, do a park for community and all. They were having a barbecue afterward. You should really join, you know. We spend more time together. It was just that I remembered, except now I felt Tom's emotions, not mine. The real Tom. The true Tom who'd been crushed beneath the Yerk's control. He was crying. Sobbing helplessly, Sally. Not Jake cried. Leave Jake alone. Leave my brother alone. Out. Look, I'll never triple you again. I swear, just leave Jake alone. The Yerk waited till full impact of direct contact with Tom's mind sank into mine. Tom was defeated. Desperate. He spent his time wishing he could die. He gave up any hope of escape. Completely given up. That is how it always is, the Yerk said. At first, the Yerk, I mean the host fights, or at least they try. But hour after hour and day after day, they see they cannot rule their own bodies. The host sees that no one even knows what's happened. No one knows he's lost in his own head, and over time, that hope dies. They become a faint, shattered creature, just like your brother. The Yerk was telling the truth, and that's what made it so terrible. It was true. I could feel Tom's complete, utter despair. I could feel he'd accepted defeat. I knew that all he wished now for was an end. And I knew also that I was no stronger than Tom. But still, one hope lingered in me. Three days, I told the Yerk. In three days, you will die. Wait and see, human. Wait and see. <laughs>